What a mighty God we serve, amen? It's wonderful to be in the house of the Lord tonight. I love to be in the presence of the Lord. I don't want to be anywhere else, really. Because I've got the Lord living in me, Sister Kathy. And where I go, the Lord goes. <laughs> but I'm not big enough to think that that's why He's here. He's everywhere. But I love the presence of the Lord. I love what I feel here tonight. Hallelujah. So good to see you. Hallelujah. Well, when you're put on the spot, you don't know what you're going to sing. April, what you want me to sing, baby? Oh, the blood that Jesus shed, he shed for me, way back, way the Lord. You ready for the word of God? Say amen. amen. Uh, let's, let's help Brother Jerry preach. Pray for him. Help him preach tonight. Let's enjoy the word of God. Come on, Brother Jerry. It's such an honor to be here tonight. In this great lineup of this revival meeting. But it's more an honor to be in the presence of the Lord and to feel what we feel in this place tonight. We are in the presence of the Lord. We are standing in His presence on holy ground. Do you agree with that tonight? 
Amen. I understand that the Spirit of God moved in this place last night. And it's kind of hard to follow Brother Jason Crabb. But we're related. He has the same initials that I do. J.C. Amen. Jason Crabb, Jerry Cornelison. And we're related to the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's an honor to be with Brother Cates and his family and be in this house tonight. Remember his dad from long ago, a pioneer of the faith, preached this glorious gospel for many years. I heard that Brother Garrison, Brother Danny's here tonight. And uh, I appreciate this man of God. When I was a young teen, he was preaching revivals at the Goose Pond Church of God. I don't know if that dates him or it dates me tonight. But it's good to be here tonight. Are you ready to hear what God has to say? This singing has blessed my heart. But I've come tonight with the word from the Lord. I come to speak something into your heart tonight. And I'm praying that the Spirit of God will back it up with signs following. I want you to stand with me, please, tonight. So many wonderful people that I know that I've pastored and pestered down through the years that are here tonight. Some of my people from Goose Pond are here, and I appreciate that so much. I don't plan to preach, but about 15, 20, 60, 120 minutes, no more than 240 minutes tonight. Let you get out before McDonald's closes their drive through <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I want you to go with me tonight to the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. And I want to begin reading at verse number 11 and read through the 14th verse. Ezekiel chapter 37, beginning at verse 11 and reading through the 14th verse. Praise the Lord. If you found it and when you do, you say amen tonight. Amen. Ezekiel 37, beginning at verse number 11. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, our hope is lost, and we are cut off from our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, cause you to come up, and out of your graves, and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. And ye shall live. And I shall place you in your own land, then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. I want to preach tonight on being desperate for revival. Would you pray and ask God to touch me as we enter into the preaching of God's Word tonight? Father, I honor you tonight. I thank you for the Word of God that has already gone forth in this revival meeting. Thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost that this people experienced yesterday around this place. And I pray, God, in the next few moments of time that you will enable me to speak your word under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Help me, God, Lord, tonight to follow the direction that you would have me to go, being sensitive to the needs of the people and the movement of your spirit. Give us a mighty altar service tonight. We'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You may be seated tonight. To be desperate is to feel or to sense hopelessness. That a situation is impossible to deal with. Everything else has failed. 
and you stand in need of something that only God can do. Ezekiel 37 is a prophetic picture of the condition of Israel that God is showing Ezekiel. But it's also practical to the church today. Give me just a few moments to walk through this. The Bible says that Ezekiel was carried out in the spirit of the Lord and was set down in a valley that was full of bones. What he was being shown was the condition of Israel at this time. He saw their depravity. He saw their hopelessness. He saw their desperation. And the Lord speaks to Ezekiel in our text and says to him, These bones are the whole house of Israel, and this is what Israel is saying about themselves. First of all, they said our bones are dried. Our very substance, our body has withered away. Somebody help me just for a few moments tonight. They were laying in this open valley, in an open grave, that that at one time represented life, that that at one time was alive, is now representing death. To look around in this valley, there was the stench of death. Come on now. Death everywhere that you could see, and I think of the condition of most of the church world today. There's a stench of death. There's a remnant of at one time was a representative of life. I'm going to preach tonight if you'll help me. We need a revival. We're desperate for a move of God. When our singing has the stench of death and our worship has a stench of death, at one time we were alive. At one time we were operating in the move of the Holy Ghost. But now we are dead. Now we are dry. Now we are laying in an open valley. We are in a desperate situation. Oh God help me tonight. I'm just going to preach to you what God gave me to give to you tonight. Then they said this about themselves. Our hope is gone. Our hope is lost. In other words, our expectation has perished. The things that we hope for and long for, that cord that we held on to is destroyed. Oh, think about that tonight. Is that not the condition that so many are in tonight? Maybe you're here tonight. You've lost your hope and you've lost your expectation. You need something to hold on to tonight. The psalmist said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. As God was giving me this message, I believe that there are desperate people in this house tonight You are here. You've lost your expectation. You've lost your hope. But tonight, God is going to restore that expectation. He's going to give you something to hold on to. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands and magnify the Lord in this house tonight. Oh, God. Oh, loose me, Holy Ghost. Oh, yes, praise him for a moment. Mm. Oh, I feel him in this house. Oh, mm. have your way, Holy Ghost. Mm. Oh, I feel him. Paul was lost at sea. It was said in Acts 27 and 20. 
when neither sun nor stars of many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, our hope that we should be saved was then taken away. That sister sang tonight about holding on. Hallelujah. That other sister sang about the blood and being in the valley. Oh, help us tonight, oh God. And somehow tonight, I've come to tell someone that's in the midst of the storm. All hope of things getting better, it seems, has just faded from you. But I'm here to tell you tonight, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I said the Holy Ghost. I got to get loose in this house tonight. I said the Holy Ghost is going to give you some hope tonight. You've gone as far as you can go. You've done all that you've known to do. You've not seen the sun. It seems that you're going to be lost. But I'm here to tell you tonight, you're going to come through this storm. And God is going to give you a hope tonight. Come on, get loose in this house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Israel said this about themselves. We're cut off. We're cut off. We're cut off from our life support. We've been excluded. We've been separated. There's nothing connected to us anymore. We're just laying here. Baby, you come to church Sunday after Sunday. You've been cut off from your life support and you're just laying. Maybe you come in the house of God and you've got that layback spirit on you. I'm just going to slip in here and I'm just going to lay back. It didn't work last service. And I really don't expect it's going to work this service. I feel the Holy Ghost. But I'm here anyhow. Well, let this be the service. Then you get connected to the life source again. I'm looking for somebody, Brother Cates, to slide up from their pew and get a hold of what's being preached tonight and say, I'm going to leave here revived. I'm going to get on my feet and I'm going to experience the glory of God in my life. Lift your hands and wave it before the Lord tonight. Oh, God. Oh, I feel him. Job 14, 7 says, For there is hope of a tree. If it be cut down, that it will sprout again. And the tender branch thereof will not cease. You're here tonight. You've been cut down. The branches are gone. Your fruit is gone. You're just there. But while you're just there, you get a whiff of some water that's coming your way. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get here tonight or not. We came down the road. There's a sign that said the road is closed. There's been a whole lot of water here lately. But oh, let me tell you something. We don't need, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. You don't need another evangelist. You don't need another song. What you need is to just get a scent of water. I'm dead. Some of you looking at me, I'm going to look right back at you. If you was preaching, I'd preach with you. Come on now. Don't you sit down on me here tonight. I'll preach to midnight. Come on now. Through a scent of water. I'll butt again. 
I'll bring forth fruit again. I'll rise again. I'll grow again. My branches will shoot out in the air again. I'm going to sing again. I'm going to shout again. I'm going to praise the Lord again. It's not over till God says that it's over. And God is saying it's not over tonight. Woo! Can I be myself? Don't you turn me down. You give me some more volume, brother. Glory to God. I'll buy you a hamburger if you turn it down, turn it up and go on and get you one. Glory to God. We'll turn it down when I get done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is God's response to their situation. This is God's response to their plight. This is the word of the Lord to them. Ezekiel prophesied to them. Don't just give them a sermonette. Prophesy to them. Speak by divine inspiration. And this is what you tell them. Oh, my people. I will open your graves. That word open means to break forth. Unstop. Throw it open and let it loose. I don't believe you got that. He said, I'm going to break forth your grave. I'm going to unstop it. I'm going to throw it open and I'm going to let it loose. And then he said, I'm going to cause you to come up and come out. I'm going to cause you to climb. I'm going to cause you to rise. I'm going to cause you to burn. I'm going to cause you to recover. I'm going to cause you to shoot forth. I'm going to cause you to stir up. Something's going on in this graveyard here tonight. I said something's going on in this graveyard here tonight. Pastor, dirt's getting ready to fly. Those that's been laying here like this. Are going to rise again. And then he said. I'm going to bring you. Into your land. That word bring. Now I, the Lord gave this to me this afternoon. I'm going to pick you up. Not only am I going to open your grave. Not only am I going to cause you to come up, I'm going to come by your way and I'm going to pick you up. He's going to bring you out that he may bring you in. Glory to God. He takes us out of Egypt to bring us in to the promised land. What God is saying to RCC tonight, I'm going to bring you out of your grave. You're going to come up. I'm going to pick you up. And I'm going to bring you into a fruitful place. This actually happened in May of 1948. When Israel became a nation. And God restored them back to their land. But this is what I wrote down today. Let it be on February 25th, 2019, that God's going to fulfill his word to you. I don't believe you heard what I said tonight. Come on. Hey, I'm just old school, got, not graduated from it, so I'm going to preach like an old school preacher tonight. Is that all right? Let it be 
day, that February 25th, 2019, that God brings you up out of your grave. Picks you up from that dead place and brings you into a land flowing with milk and honey. There's going to be fruit again. Hallelujah. You're going to be effective again. God is going to do the as promised unto you. Then he said, I will put my spirit in you. His spirit is life. And he said, you shall live. Verse 5 through 6, God told Ezekiel to prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you, and you, and you shall live. Well, you ought to be shouting right now all over this church. Turn to somebody and point at them and said, God says you're going to live. Turn to the other person and tell them God says you're going to live. You know what that means? You're going to revive. You're going to be quickened from sickness, from discouragement, from faintness, from death. You're going to have life. You're going to grow. You're going to recover. And you're going to be made whole. Just in case you were looking down at your phone right then, let me just say that again. God says you're going to live. You're going to revive. You're going to be quickened from your sickness. You're going to be quickened from your discouragement. You're going to be quickened from your faintness. You're going to be quickened from your death. You're going to have life. You're going to grow. You're going to recover. You're going to be made whole. Live. 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 Oh, Lord of God. Live. You're going to live. You're going to live. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Hello. Come on. You're going to live. You're going to live. <laughs> You're going to live. You're coming out. You're coming out and you're going to live. Oh, God. Hallelujah. 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 You're going to live. Lord, I feel him. You're going to live. You're going to live. You're going to live. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 16 and 6 says, When I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, When thou wast in thy blood, live. Yea, I said unto thee, When thou wast in thy blood, live. Let's say it again. Revive, be quickened <laughs> to have life, to grow, to recover, to be made whole. When I saw you polluted, when everybody else turned their back on you, everybody else said there was no hope for you, I came by your way and I said you are going to live. When you were strung out on drugs, 
I came by and said, you're going to live. When you were drunk, he came by and said, you're going to live. When you lost everybody in your family, he came by and said, you're going to live. Well, if you're going to sit there, I'm going to sit here too. Wearing me out. Hallelujah. When the church gave up on you. I said, when the church gave up on you. When they said there's no room for your kind here. He said, you're going to live. Do you know you don't have to go to the places of the world to find people that are hurting? They're showing up at church. And they don't need some old dead orthodoxy. They don't need our ritual. They don't need our religiosity. They need to hear a thus saith the Lord that they're going to live. They're going to get on their feet. There is hope for them. Woo! Hallelujah! Lord, I feel him right now. I said it yesterday. Got several people coming to our church. Thank God. I got to sign a card, Pastor Hayden, Kate's. Put my name, the church name, and the date. Just they have record that they've been there. So thank God. Give me 10, give me 20, give me 100. Come on, that are hurting, that are hungry for God, that have come to a hopeless, desperate place in their life. And the only thing that will help them is the Lord. I've come to tell somebody tonight, you're going to live. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Ezekiel 36, 26 to 30. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart of your flesh and will give you a heart of flesh. I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my commandments and you'll do them. What he's saying, I'm going to take my word. I'm going to turn it into my spirit. I'm going to put it on the inside. And at one time you weren't able to walk this walk. You weren't able to be obedient to the Lord. But now the Spirit of God has entered in. And you're walking a new walk. And you're talking a new talk. You're singing a new song. Hallelujah. I said you're singing a new song that the angels can't even sing. Because he has done a transformation in your life. Then he says, you shall dwell in the land that I gave it to your fathers. You'll be my people. I'll be your God. I will save you from your uncleanness. Hear what he said. I will save you from your uncleanness. There's nothing like having the Lord 
deliver you and save you and clean you up and make a testimony out of you that at one time you were dirty and filthy but he put his spirit in you and he saved you from your uncleanness you were wallowing around in sin you were wallowing around in the lust of the flesh you were of your father the devil but now he says I'm going to save you from your uncleanness when you come in contact with the Lord you can't stay unclean he'll clean you up come on I said he'll clean you up just lift your hand and wave it like that he'll clean you up He'll change your desire. He'll give you different desires. I might as well. He'll take you from having one foot in the church and one foot in the world. Somebody help me for a moment. That's where so many people are. They're teeter-tottering back and forth. But when he saves you from your uncleanness, you'll sing that song, take this whole world, but just give me Jesus. You can have my addiction. You can have the things that I've been involved with. I just want the Lord and all that he has for me. I'm hurrying, but I'm taking my time. I'll save you from your uncleanness. I'll call for the corn and will increase it. Lay no more famine upon you. I will multiply the fruit of the tree. I'll increase the field. And you'll be no more reproach of famine among the heathen that's what he will do for you Ezekiel began to prophesy to these bones there was a noise there was a shaking there was a coming together there was order there was structure but then he preached to the four winds. Come, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. And the breath came into them, and they stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. There's an army getting up. There's an army that is rising up. There was an army that's standing on their feet there is an army that is being recovered there's an army that's being made whole there's an army that's been quickened come on there's an army that's encouraged themselves in the lord there's an army that was once dead in trespasses and sins but now they've been quickened the breath of god is in them they're coming up out of the valley hallelujah they're coming up out of the valley they're going to be fruitful they're going to multiply they're going to do something for God in this last hour do you want to be a part of that come on lift your hands and praise him come on I feel him right now Holy Ghost have your way glory my God Brother Cates, the last time I was with you, years ago, on Sunday morning, I don't know if it's still there or up there, your office, top of the stairs. I remember going up to that office, sitting there and studying praying while Sunday school was going on 
And I'll never forget it, and I've said it many times, as I sat in that chair. The presence of the power of God came in that room and literally shook the chair that I was sitting in. I thought about that today. And I thought, Lord, as the Word of God is going forth tonight and the Spirit of God is moving, let there be a noise and let there be a shaking in this house. I walked down those stairs that morning and came into this place and the presence and the power of God filled this room. In the name of Jesus, I speak life over this congregation right now. And I pray not only will there be a noise, There'll be a shaking on these pews. People will be shaken out of their place that they are in. To the point that they've got to get up from where they are. And come together and receive what they need from the Lord. Are you desperate for a move of God tonight? Are you desperate for revival? Stand with me all over this house tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh God. I want you just to begin to praise Him. Come on, I don't hear you praising. Come on. Come on, magnify the Lord of this house tonight. I hear some cries of desperation. Come on, music. Come quickly, Brother Haman. Glory. For I will speak life unto you. You shall live. You shall arise. You will not die. But you will declare my goodness and my glory in your life. You've come to the end of yourself. But I'm coming to meet you. And I will take you where you cannot take yourself. And I'll bring you into a fruitful place. And you shall know that it has been my hand that has performed it, saith the Lord. And lift your hands and glorify him. Glory. Glory. There's some desperate cries here tonight. There's some desperate situations here tonight that only God can take you from where you are. There's already two in this altar. Respond to the moving of the Holy Ghost tonight. If you're desperate, you need God to move for you. Come on. That's right. Get out of your seat. Come on. Get out of your seat. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 There's about 25 of you. You need to start moving right now. Come on. Hallelujah. Pray, saints. Pray, saints. Pray, saints. God is here. Oh, 
Jesus. Hallelujah. There are broken people in this altar. Tears are flowing. They're crying out to the Lord tonight. Come on. You need to move. You need to move. You need to move. You've tried and you failed. Willpower wasn't enough, but Holy Ghost power's enough tonight. The Holy Ghost is waiting. The Holy Ghost is waiting. Any more desperate people? Any more desperate people? You want to move a God in your life? You want a fresh touch of God in your life? Get out of your seat. Come on. Come on. I'm waiting just a few more moments. Come on. How many of you believe God's able to touch these in this altar? Come on. I need some Holy Ghost saints of God. Get out of your seat. Come in this altar. Lay your hands on these. Believe God to touch them. Save them and cleanse them. Sanctify them and fill them with the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. I tell you what I want us to do. As many as will. Now the altar service isn't a time to leave. It's a time to get involved. I want as many as will get out of your seat. Come stand behind these. Lift your hands and just begin to praise the Lord. Come on. Come on. God's going to work the miraculous in this house tonight. The Holy Ghost is falling in this altar tonight. If he has to reach way down, Jesus will make you up. Roman chair, they had nobody to go their bail, but God stepped in sin and earthquake oh. shake the jail. They came out shouting, praising on the other side, and if you had to reach way down, my Jesus to pick you up. If you had to reach way down, my Jesus to pick you up. If it has to reach way. Such a long, long time ago, but God stepped in, took the key down of the flame. They came out shouting, praising in Jesus' name. If they had to reach way down, my Jesus will pick you up. If he has to reach way down, my Jesus will pick you up. If he has to reach way down, my Jesus will pick you up. If he has to reach way down, my Jesus will pick you up. 
does to pick you up if it has to reach way down. My Jesus to pick you up. My Jesus to pick you up if it has to reach way down. Way down. My Jesus to pick you up. I'm on my way, way, way glory, way, way, since I've laid, laid my on my burden down. down. Oh, yes, I'm on my way, way to glory, my way, way to glory, since I've laid, laid my burden down. down. Well, glory, 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 somebody touch me, glory, 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 somebody touch me, glory, 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 somebody touch me, and I know it won't. Somebody touch me while I was singing. Somebody touch me while I was singing. Somebody touch me and the Lord was the head of the Lord. While I was praising God, somebody touch me while I was praising God. Somebody touch me while I was praising God. Somebody touch me and the Lord was the head of the Lord. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Yes, in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the praise. There's one just power in the 
the cross would not be heavy and the hill would not be hard to lie. He never offered matrix without finding, but he said hell would always come in time. Remember when you're standing in the valley of decision. Somebody help me give God praise in the house. Come on. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Give him a shout of praise tonight. Hallelujah. How many of you know that we read through Scripture? When you read through Scripture, not every battle was won. Not every battle was won, but I, I want to testify to you that tonight, some battles have been won in the house. And I, I read over there in one place, there's one battle they won, that it took them one day to win the battle, but it took them three days to carry home the spoil. So tonight, when you leave here, this battle that you've won, I want you to know that God's going to bless you in the days to come with the spoils of the victory. Amen. Turn around and give your neighbor a high five. Say, I sure am glad you was here tonight. All our visitors, we thank you for coming. God bless you. We appreciate you. As you take your seats, we're going to dismiss in just a minute. I want you to take your seats.